All right, so we are live. So let me give everybody, so let me actually back up. Thank you all for joining. We are super excited about this content. This is gonna be very, very free form. Uh, we do not have slides created. I'm sure I can hear silent cheering in the background. Um, this is not gonna be that kind of a presentation. This is gonna be very much an open mic back and forth between Tim and I. And I wanna give you an idea how this happened because this is a great lesson learned for everybody. Um, Tim and I were bantering back and forth this morning and we were, we were talking about value propositions and, and how difficult it is to sometimes wrestle with it and come up with some good answers on how to articulate your unique difference in the marketplace. And as we were having that conversation quite early this morning, pre-coffee, at least for me, um, Tim said, you know what, this conversation, this dialogue that we are having right now would be really good for us to have kind of live in front of IT service providers, MSPs, who are hopefully wrestling with this very same thing inside of this market. So literally, we threw this together, created an event, we're bringing a bunch of people in, have a quick agenda. Um, it's not going to be super formal. We don't know how long this will take. It's probably about 30 to 40 minutes. And it's going to be a dialogue back and forth. So Tim, let me get you to introduce yourself. I'll introduce me. And then we will just jump into the conversation around value prop. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Jennifer. Thanks for that introduction. And thanks for uh, thanks for pulling this together, you know, sort of last minute, as you said, pre-coffee, right? Um, I find that lots of things happen pre-coffee. <laughs> that being said, I have coffee in my hand. Um, <laughs> But anyways, yeah, um, I'm Tim Golden. I'm the CTO at Vital Tech Services and in partnership with the Compliancy Guys, a uh, new, new platform, a new thing that we're rolling out literally next week. And, you know, the conversation, as Jennifer said this morning, was how do we explain our value proposition to you guys, you MSPs, about what we're trying to offer, you know, both from her sales and marketing experience and my you know, CMMC NIST experience. And so we were bouncing back and forth and I was like, you know what, well, let's just go live. Let's just <laughs> hash it out. Let's just have a conversation because honestly, MSPs face the same thing, right? I have an MSP, I'm running my MSP. I'm trying to figure out my value proposition to, uh, to my clients, you know, trying to explain to them why, you know, why antivirus just isn't the only thing, like why cybersecurity is important. And I hate that cybersecurity word. It's so damn bastardized. But anyways, Tim Golden, Vital Tech, and the Um, Yeah, so I don't know, we want to dive into it a little bit. Yeah, let me introduce myself. I know it's inside of my group. But um, just so that everybody knows, I'm Jennifer Bleem. I'm the owner of MSP Sales Revolution. And I am a I call myself the cybersecurity Sherpa. So I help people take cybersecurity to market, figure out how the, what their stack should look like, how to market it, how to sell it, how to explain the value prop. Um, and I also have a membership that is all around sales marketing mindset, which we'll, we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. Um, I don't, it's, this is not a big sales pitch. Um, so we, we're just going to jump in. Um, I keep saying value prop. You're going to see things like value proposition. You're going to hear unique selling proposition. They're, they're synonyms of one another. Um, and so, so when I say value prop uh, from, from the mind of the MSP, um, and by the way, my husband has an MSP. I've worked with him for years. And so I, I live and breathe MSP world all day long. It is challenging because sometimes it doesn't feel like there is anything that is unique about what you are doing. So let's park on the concept of what a value prop is for a little while and then let's pivot over into maybe how to create one for your for your company. So Tim, I'm gonna let you take this first and then I'll kind of piggyback off of you. Yeah, so what is a value proposition, right? That was your question. Yep. <sighs> or value add or I, you know, when I hear that, especially when I'm working with, you know, potential salespeople to help me, right? I What I hear is what sets me apart from everybody else? Right. And, you know, that's really great. Let's, I'll talk about, I'll put my MSP hat on for a minute and say what separates me from everything else as far as MSPs are concerned. And hold on, the messages are flying in. Yay, people are joining. Yes, if you are, 
If awesome. you are joining us and you're here in the meeting, I'm gonna digress for a second. Let us know with hashtag live. All right, Jim is in. I love and if it. If you're watching this on a replay, please let us know. Hashtag replay. Okay, great. Whew, get that. Oh, got that out of the way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, value proposition is basically, I interpret that is what sets me apart from everybody else, right? I can pretty well and pretty easily explain that when it comes to the cybersecurity, the, and I, I'm not going to just stop using that word, with the NIST side and the CMMC side of the house, um, what sets me apart from everybody else as far as helping managed service providers understand those controls in you know day in and day out in the weeds well nobody's doing it <laughs> and great i just gave away the farm now everybody's going to do it and i'm anyways but the point is i have 20 plus years of, of uh experience in dealing with nist on a day-to-day -day basis in 853 uh, DFARS, CMMC, and, you know, insert pain in the neck acronym here. What sets me apart is, again, my value proposition is not to toot my own horn, but I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and, and I can prove that I know what I'm doing because I have Homeland, Health and Human Services, Department of Ed, yada, yada. I have these federal agencies that audit me and my stuff and stuff that we do annually that give me the giant federal stamp of approval. So if you, yes. yeah. so that when it comes to what I'm doing with that ugly cybersecurity word is yes. Now, as a managed service provider, that's a little different, right? Because when, when we, when we look at, when we look at my, well, when I look at my competition in the area, right, who are my competitors and what am I, you know, what am I going up against? And then my market, right? So I walk into healthcare provider X, okay? Healthcare provider, let's just call him, you know, Johnny's foot doctor. So Johnny's foot doctor is using a national healthcare company to manage their IT, okay? So I'm going up, what's different from the national guy with antivirus and all the other whatever versus what I do? Well, first and foremost, I need to look at what are my offerings? Are we really talking apples and oranges? Are we talking apples and a side of beef? Not even in the same, you know, not even the same ballpark, right? I'm playing basketball and they're playing squash. Maybe, right. right. But so I would caution you, um, and I know you, you are not doing this, but for the benefit of people who are listening, it can be super tempting to start to list all these features of things that I do. So I, I have a 24 by seven help desk. I have this fabulous antivirus solution. I have missed experience. I have, you know, I, I, it, first of all, it's very, I, 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 but a value prop needs to be placed in the mind of the prospect, right? So it needs to be something the prospect cares about. So, Listing 24 by 7 help desk and antivirus and you know, NIST, those are features. And so it's super tempting as a marketing person or a salesperson to list features. I would also say most vendors, when they are selling to this community, are selling features. But what you have to do when you go into the small business world is sell benefits. And so an easy way to do that is say, okay, I've got a feature of 24 by seven help desk, so that, and then fill in the blank. Filling in that blank is the benefit. Filling in that blank is valuable. So it could be so that, um, this is a real world experience from one of my colleagues. He was, um, he needed to print a, a document so that he could sign a deal that day. And the document date, like the expiration date was like three hours from now. If he did not get that document printed, signed, scanned, and sent back, he literally was going to lose a million dollar deal. And his printer died. And he doesn't do printers. He, he's a sales coach. He's like, I don't, I'm like, he's like, I turn it off, I turn it back on. That's it. That's all I know how to do. And so to him, having an IT company or an IT guy or an MSP, the value to him was knowing I'm not going to lose a million dollar deal because my printer won't work. And so the feature is, oh, we're going to fix your printer. 
but there is so much more value to it than that. And that's just one example. It's, it's a kind of a silly example, but that's, that's entering into the world of your prospect because that's where the prospect lives all day long. And that's what they don't want to have happen. Oh, I lost a million dollar deal because I couldn't print. Like that's ridiculous, but that's, that's life. That's the reality. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> I think you make, you, you make a really good key point with, you know, and I do this when it comes to, when it comes to our stuff, you know, and maybe, maybe, maybe my, my BDM, my business development manager will smack me upside the head and hopefully he does. But <clears throat> I try not to sell line items. I don't line item anything. I try not to. Um, number one. Number two, I talk about categories and not tools. Mm, I like that. Right. Number three, I talk about what benefits them at the end of the day. Right. So, you know, depends on who I'm talking to. Right. So if I'm talking to the COO, the operations or the finance officer, they want to hear words like um, accountability, profitability, productivity, you know, productivity, you know, blah, 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 blah. If I'm talking to the IT guy, or maybe the CEO who knows a little bit or thinks he's supposed to know a little bit about secure stuff, or the IT guy, I might actually get into, you know, hey, we do sock, we do seam, you know, use a couple of the buzz. So it's really about the audience. Yes. Who we're talking to in the value proposition conversation, right? So for me, when I'm talking about the compliancy guy's stuff, right? And I'm talking NIST and I'm talking CMMC and I'm talking 853 Rev2, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm talking about control lists. I'm talking about those specific things that they're IT guys, they kind of, they don't need to know about productivity. What they want to know is, hey, do you have a, a disaster recovery plan template? Well, yeah, we do sign up and you can get it. Do you have an incident response plan template? Yeah, we do sign up and you can get it. Or we can help you craft one specifically for your client or yourself, right? Which then, by the way, you are positioning yourself as an expert because you're like, yeah, absolutely, we can help you with that. No big deal. So you've now identified something that's valuable to them. You're able to deliver on it. And now you're much more peers, That especially when you're selling to an IT guy or an IT department. When, when you're peers, you've removed that, oh, you're trying to take my job. And instead, it's, no, I'm trying to be a support. I'm, I'm, I'm a support system. I'm an extension of your team. And that's important as well. And I, right, right. I love that you said, the way I articulate it is walking out of a sales call, if you've, if you've just presented to three people, there better be compelling reasons for each of those people to want to do business with you, something that is going to make you valuable to each of them, because the CEO has different concerns than the controller has, and that, that person has a different con concerns than the, the everyday worker or the IT guy. And so identifying what those what those challenges are and what that value is, is super important. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, and honestly, um, you know, Trevor just made a good point there, you know, uh, features, I'm sorry, I just wanna read it so I get it right. Solutions, less features, right? So more solutions, less feet, right? Yes. Le more, more like, here's the pro business problem we're trying to help you solve. Yep. And I would even say, so I will sometimes use the word impact, the business impact, the business implication, because what you're trying to do in a sales call is move someone from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And there is always a desire to hold on to point A. Even, even if it's a horrible experience, there's a lot of psychology wrapped up in the fact that I'm at point A because of a decision that I made. Maybe I hired a terrible IT to company or I, um, I let cybersecurity go for too long and now I've, I've got a ransomware attack or whatever. But my identity is wrapped up in the fact that I chose point A where I am. And in order for me to move to point B, there has to be a, an acknowledgement, a subtle acknowledgement that I made a bad decision. Mm -hmm. And so, um, or what I like to say is you made the best decision for where you were at the time and now you're at a different place. And, and so that value prop can be, here is the ammunition, here is the evidence that says it's time to move from point A to point B. 
and and there's nothing wrong with outgrowing your service provider. Congratulations, you've grown in your business. You've grown in terms of complexity and maturity. Uh, my husband and I just outgrew our, our tax planning person because our, our net worth is larger, our companies are more successful, there's a lot more complexity because we have two LLCs and contractor income and it, we've outgrown him. That's good. That's a sign of growth. So if you can integrate that into your value prop where you are now saying we work with growing mature companies who realize they made a good decision four or five years ago, but it's just not what they need today. That's a fantastic value prop because you just pulled the rug out from under that psychological, oh, I made a bad decision. No, Tim, you made a great decision four years ago, but your company has evolved in four years and it's changed and it needs something new. And that's where we come in. Gotcha. Yeah. Lots, lots of stuff wrapped up in there. So, okay. Solutions. Yeah. Again, Trevor are saying providing solutions is superior than presenting a list of features. I am on a uh, one person, um, goal to try to get vendors to start selling features or sorry, start selling benefits as opposed to features. Mm. Um, because sometimes we are featured to death in these product demos that it can be hard to turn off those voices in the head when we get into a, a sales conversation. So, gotcha. okay. You know what? So time out future reference. Yes. Uh, when we're going Facebook live and you're creating a live event in your group, I think in order for people to watch it, they need to be a member of your group. Because oh. <laughs> I just got a couple people saying, hey, it says it's not available. And I'm like, oh, it's probably because they're not a member of the group. I so if you get a huge true. flurry and influx of of people wanting to join your group right now, that's because why? it's because I just blasted a few of my friends and was like, hey, dude, <laughs> where are you? Uh, right. Well, and what what we can obviously you can download or I can download it and you can share it. I may also post it out to YouTube. It could be a good um, a good yeah. resource for others. Good so too. good to know that's the what well, that's the advantage of flying fast and throwing things together quickly right. that well, you'll learn. <laughs> We're hoping we had a little more coffee since this morning, but yes, that's okay. So, exactly. um, so just I want to go. I want to look qu real quickly before we move on to anything else about the um, any any comments in there. Do you see comments in there? People asking stuff that we that we might have missed before we sort of move on. The fabulous thing about Facebook Live is it truncates the comments, so I can only see like the last. All four. right. So let me see. Let me see. Jim was like, "Hey, give me the templates. Great. I'll talk. I'll send Jim a message. We'll do." Trevor, oh, what's the value prop surrounding CMMC? Great right. question. Right. Other than being able to continue in business, if you're part of the supply chain or um, you've been told you have to meet CMMC requirements, that seems like a fairly large one. Being able to bid on new jobs, because very quickly, is it the next year? that in order to be able to bid on some jobs, you'll have to be able to demonstrate what level of CMMC um, certification is. I don't know if, that, if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Trevor, let me ask the question. Are you saying what's, how would you articulate the value prop to your clients or how, what is the value prop to MSPs? Because there's two different audiences we've got. So, Matthew is saying, I'd assume the same around any other compliance need. And here's what's interesting, because uh, I was thinking about this this morning. For those people who have been selling or attempting to sell HIPAA compliance I, and, and running into brick walls because the doctors just don't care, I think, and, and Tim, I'm going to give you permission to correct me on a live, and I'm totally fine with that. Um, I think part of the problem is that where well, the feature is you'll get HIPAA compliant, not that that's a thing, but I'll help you, you know, get to the point where you can check the boxes for HIPAA compliancy. The so what is what's missing because there's no teeth in the regulation. So, so that, well, so that you don't end up on the wall of shame, which your patients don't care about anyway. Like the so what is missing, I think, in HIPAA. Um, I, I mean, I guess it's so that your client data is secure. Well, no, I, you know, I, I, let me, let me, let me interject a little bit about HIPAA and what I've, what I've done around HIPAA. You know, there's, you know, we can get 
the compliancy group and bring them in and yada, 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 whatever. I don't want to get into that. But here's, you know, here's the thing, the value proposition when I'm talking to a healthcare client about HIPAA, right? Well, number one, you're a regulated industry. So you are required to make sure you have safeguards in place so that protected health information isn't getting spewed all over the place, right? So the, the so what is, if you're not protecting your stuff and your stuff gets spewed out all over the place, you're pretty much going on a business to put it bluntly. Like the so what is, you didn't put reasonable safeguards in place. Your insurance company isn't going to pay a claim because there isn't reasonable safeguards in place. You know, now you have like now you fall into incident management you have to do you know all the people you need to tell no wait maybe now you have to provide credit reporting blah 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 social security monitoring blah blah like all that the so what is the pr nightmare the right, what the and the risk. Risk yeah okay right the so what is the risk so so as we were talking earlier it is hipaa compliance so that you don't have a cybersecurity incident and then here's all the implications of a cybersecurity incident. So it becomes this, that piece of it becomes the same conversation as why do I need cybersecurity? Well, you need cybersecurity so that you don't have to deal with all the implications of an incident. Now you've got cybersecurity and not that cybersecurity and compliance are necessarily the same thing because they're not, but it's, it's that same, um, kind of that same flow chart, if you will. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, yeah. So, you know, I think we talked a little bit about, and I, and, and, you know, and it's, you know, it's, wow, we've been a half an hour in already. Yeah. So I think we, well, we, we started about 10, 10 after. So we're not yeah, so we're about 15, 20 minutes in, yeah. you know, we've talked a lot about what is value proposition. What does that, what, you know, insert what sets me apart verb here. <laughs> and, you know, we spent the last 15, 20 minutes sort of defining that and how we define that and what that actually looks like in a tangible thing. Um, before, I think before we move on into, you know, how do we enter into those conversations with prospects? Um, I just want to kind of really dig in here a little bit on the comments to make sure we didn't miss anything before we move on. So uh, you so Trevor's comment about, um, you know, to the end user or articulate the value. I think we're going to discuss that part next, right? So mm -hmm. um, let's see, you know, we're same way with compliance. Yeah, Matt and I, Matt, I hopefully I, I addressed your, it's the same way with other compliance needs beyond NIST and CMMC, like what we, we literally just talked about um, 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 HIPAA. So blah, let me just read here. Solutions. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Jim, give me the policy templates. Yes, Jim, I'll get back to you. Um, <laughs> all right. So I think I think we've kind of beaten to death. What is a value proposition? And you know, what, the, what does that mean? I.e. what sets you apart? Yes. Now, I guess the next sort of set of questions is like, how do we get into that conversation with your prospect, right? Or, you know, what do we do? Like the, the you know, the weight loss program, for example, like it's pretty easy to discuss the value prop in a weight loss program because at the end of the day, there's results, Yes. <laughs> right? I'm going to teach you how to eat better. You will lose weight. I'm going to teach you how to exercise. You will lose weight. Yes. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to teach you how to shop on a budget. You will save money. How do we do that with services? Yeah. With sales and marketing services or, you know, uh, security consulting services. Like, I, I would never say, I'm going to show you how to market your thing so you make money. Eh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, I think it, that's, so, that's the big meat of what you and I were discussing this morning is how do we explain this stuff to people? Yeah. And it's interesting because I had a conversation on a, on a message board uh, where someone said they have a service uh, where they were, they're doing a specific lead generation tactic. And they, they were, um, they were a little bit frustrated because they weren't able to close the deal. Um, and he was struggling to articulate his value proposition and my point to him is, okay, your service is creating leads. That's great. 
people, they will say, oh, I need more leads, but it's not that they're looking to print them out and wallpaper their office with them. Nobody wants more leads. They want more leads because that leads to more opportunities, which leads to more revenue. And so, so they want leads that they can close to turn it into money, right? So um, I said, what the challenge is that you're selling your service, you're selling that, um, that feature, hey, I'm going to give you more leads when what they really want is more sales. So I, I suggested to him that he partner with a, a sales company or something so that he can say, and not only do I you know, create leads for you, but I also have you know, two or three or four recorded sessions or something, I, whatever. However, he delivers what they want, which is, which is the, the money. And so understanding, okay, if we kind of go, go down a, a funnel, what do your clients want? So, so specific to IT support managed services, we'll talk about the CMMC thing in a minute, but specific to IT support, they want to be able to work all day. They do not want downtime, which believe it or not, that is a buzzword in our industry. And I, I would want you to explain it in a sales call, but for the purposes of this audience, we all know what downtime is. They want increased productivity. They want to know that when they have a problem, you're going to answer the phone. Like that's what they want. The way that you do it is with your 24 hour help desk and a, a button on the screen and an easy button and a, you know, whatever, your RMM tools and your tool set and your solution stack, all of that is, it's the, the fuel that drives the engine, mm -hmm. but what they ultimately want is to not have to ever worry about anything technology related again. So that's what you're selling is that end result. Never, you know, if you're doing all inclusive, you don't pay for any projects, you don't pay for any, anything, one set dollar figure, we take care of anything with a cable or a cord or cordless, if you're using cordless, you know, yeah, that yeah. type of thing. So I don't know exactly, that clearly needs a little bit of polish, but that is that is a unique differentiator. Um, another thing that I have seen is the white glove service, um, mm -hmm. where where you, you are twice as expensive or perhaps 60% more expensive than everyone else in your area, but you truly, but you truly provide the white glove service. Please don't just raise your rates and call it white glove service and think you can make bank because maybe you can, but not for long. But if you truly have the ability to be on site instantly, um, you know, evenings, weekends, holidays, you know, whatever, it's a different model. It is a very different model. Now you'll attract, this is where it gets a little bit scary, You'll attract a specific kind of person that only ever stays at the Hyatt. And if they're going to buy a car, it's going to be a Jag. I mean, it's it, like there, there are those people. And so if you structure your service to appeal to them, that can be scary because you are then repelling the whole rest of the market. And that's, that is part of the challenge of the value prop is that um, if we go back to the weight loss analogy, like if I was starting a, a, weight loss a weight loss company saying, hey, I'll teach you how to lose five pounds in the next week so you can fit in your wedding dress is a very different message than I'll teach you how to lose 60 pounds over the next year and make it part of your lifestyle so you can keep it off. Still weight loss, but two very different markets, two very different messages, two very different value props because the bride who has a wedding in T minus six days doesn't want to lose 60 pounds in the next year. It's not valuable to her. There is no value prop because it doesn't solve the problem. So it goes back to solving that problem solutions over features. Exactly. And I think, you know, that's that, you know, <clears throat> as somebody that hates the D word, diet, um, that's like, the four that letter word to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, in the other F word, <clears throat> fitness, <clears throat> the, the you know these diet and, and 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 weight loss analogies are killing me. So I'm gonna go back to the I'm gonna go as a, as a longtime mechanic. I'm gonna go back to the car analogies. You're gonna go where it's comfortable, <laughs> right? So yeah, honestly, I think you know when you're talking about the services and how to explain them to clients. Um, I'm going to put on my compliancy hat guy 
for a minute um, and and talk about you know it as I mentioned before it's kind of easy for me to explain value proposition on compliancy stuff because there are tangible things that I can be doing that you know we as the compliancy guys can be offering to managed service providers right yeah well you know you get calls you get resources you get this you get that you get a whole bunch of other things but the tangible stuff like you know as part of our peer call we're going to look at a control set and we're going to dig into what that means help you understand it so that you understand it and then you have the tools the technologies and the pieces around it so when your client faces that issue you're good to go right now in my managed in my managed services my vital tech hat you are absolutely right you know i need to make sure that i'm having the conversation for the right audience right not the bride that wants to you know, not the race car driver that wants to win the Daytona 500, but, you know, the the single mother of three that needs the minivan to last her 15 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And, and it's interesting because you you took a feature and you teased out a benefit. And, and so you can do that once. You can also do it again. So you said the feature is peer group calls where we're going to talk about, you know, specific controls so that, and, and you, I think you said so that you'll understand the controls and you'll be able to articulate them to your clients, but there's another, so that, right. And then there'll be another, so that, and then there'll be another, so that, and right. that, that going through that exercise to say, okay, who cares? So that what, you know, what's the value to that thing? What's the value? And going through that exercise and digging in, not easy, but extremely valuable. And, and I think that's one thing you and I were talking about is, is wrestling with these things. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's much more fun to spin up the landing pages and to get on lives and talk about things like this than to try to wrestle with how do I articulate my value prop and, and knowing that it, I may wrestle with it for a month and you know come up with what I think is the right answer. And it may not be right in a month or so. It may just need tweaked and need contained and made people like it sounded great to me, but nobody's understanding it. And so this is one of those things that MSP really, they struggle with, but they hit that struggle barrier and they go, eh, it's hard. Nobody I know has figured it out. And so they, they and I'm making broad generalizations here, but mm -hmm. they, they take that as a, an acceptance that because I don't know anyone who's figured it out, I'm going to let myself off the hook. I would challenge you to say, all right, maybe nobody has figured it out. I think that's incorrect. I think that's a, that's a belief that, and it's not true, but right. fine. If, even if it was true, fine, nobody else has figured it out. So be the first, how, how could you figure it out? What would it look like? You know, go for a walk and wrestle with it, whiteboard it out, get on the phone with a coach, like reach out to a colleague across the country and say, Hey, have you ever done this? Get on a, a mastermind or a peer call fit do the wrestling do the hard stuff right and i think that's what you and i are doing this morning today right now is is ha and, and you know what it's okay that we wrestle with this because nobody's figured it out maybe they have maybe they, i don't know it doesn't matter but yeah. i haven't figured it out right. you haven't we right. haven't and so yeah wrestle with it you yeah. know try it you know and this is what i love about technology and that is the volatility of it right so you try this for a couple of weeks it doesn't work okay you change it you try that for a couple of weeks Ooh, parts of that work but parts of it didn't okay take yes. the good stuff and move on yeah right <laughs> it's know? like the best part of high school science class right you do a control and then you try to beat it and then you try to beat that one and yeah. okay so I, let me let me hand you a softball um because i know we were we're at about the 35 minute mark or so um yeah. i uh, with the the understanding that your value prop is still being dialed in and not 100 percent perfect mm -hmm. tell people what you do <laughs> so uh i'm gonna not talk about managed services because you guys all do that right yeah. so uh the compliancy guys is you know kind of came out of literally last week so the last probably five or six months uh, both myself and my counterpart, Matt, have been having conversations with managed service providers throughout the course of our weeks. And, 
you know, maybe I spend an hour here, 45 minutes there, whatever. Um, and I've come to realize that, you know, I probably spend five to six to seven hours a week with managed service providers who need help understanding CMMC and NIST and real security, not the bastardized buzzword that everybody's talking about, right? So that's the first part is I've been seeing this need. I've been getting the life sucked out of me for months and which is fine. I love to be able to help people, but I also still need to put food on my table. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But there is a big need in the community because there's a lot of smaller one, two, three man MSP shops and even some of the bigger ones that don't have VCSOs, that don't have, you know, the, again, toot to my own horn, 20 plus years of dealing with control sets day in and day out, right? And so literally last week i went and bought a domain name matt and i got some stuff together we threw up a website and now i'm trying to figure out the value prop <laughs> what am i presenting and how can i package that in something that's affordable scalable and tangible i really want it to be tangible at the end of the day i want you guys and girls and managed service providers to walk away with something every week that you can go back and implement, that you can go back and either research or you can go get a tool or you can help yourself and help your clients really protect and have security, not cybersecurity, darn word. <laughs> <laughs> that's really like, that's where I'm coming from. So, you know, we, you and I chit chatted a little bit this morning, like, how do I say that in a couple of bullet points on a website? I don't. And do I sit here and record a video and stick that there? They probably won't watch it. Like, right. yeah. okay. hey, let's talk value prop that we all wrestle with. Yes, and, and we do wrestle with it. I mean, on, on my end, I've got a very clear value prop for my consulting. So literally inside of eight weeks, I'm helping IT companies sell $12,000 in recurring revenue with a structured plan process, et cetera. But about halfway through last year, I had people coming to me and saying, okay, I've already figured out my stack, but on the cyber side, again, that dirty word, right? But I struggle with the marketing just for managed services and I struggle with sales and I kind of, my, I know my, my head trash is there and I don't think, I don't think well of myself and my company. And so um, what I put together was a, a membership called Get It. Um, it is for companies and business owners and marketing managers who get it. They've already reached some level of success, but they keep butting their head into something, some kind of a, a glass ceiling, some kind of a habit, a mindset or whatever. And what I'm doing is coaching them with ongoing content, ongoing tips, tricks, reminders to stay focused. Um, and, and the people that are in that group are loving it. But my the best value prop I have come up with is it is the marketing, sales, mindset hacks that you wish you had time to find, but you didn't. Like all the answers are out there, right? You could look through 873 videos on YouTube and find that little hidden gem, mm -hmm. but nobody has time to do that. And so that's what I'm doing is reading the books and curating the content and then delivering that to my members every single week at a ridiculously low dollar figure so that they don't have to go out and find that motivation or that idea or that referral strategy for themselves mm -hmm. because there's nothing new under the sun. The problem is picking up the rock and finding it. And, and we don't have enough time all day long to pick up 800 rocks to find the 800 ideas that we need. And we probably don't even need 800 ideas. We probably only need 12 or 15 really good ones to drive the business forward. And so- I'm still wrestling with it to articulate exactly what that value prop is because it isn't lose, you know, lose five pounds in six days. It's not, you know, it's not use my fancy spreadsheet and you'll, you know, change your, um, change your life and be able to invest $2,000 a month into your 401k. Like it's, it's not that kind of a value prop. So we'll keep wrestling. Um, we'll figure it out. Uh, would you would you either list in the chat, actually list live for people your best contact information so that uh, for people who watch this you know, later or on a YouTube or wherever it ends up getting housed, um, that they know how to reach you? 
and yeah, they'll be the same. I wonder if we'll... I can put that, uh, let me see, chat, chat. So I wonder if you're going to do the recording, does that bring the chat over to? I don't think it does. Yeah, so, um, well, what I can do real quick is I can do this. Watch this stuff. What? Right? Hold on. <laughs> Right, so share screen, sharing my screen, right? You can see, so the compliancyguys.com, pretty easy to get to, right? You can learn about our program, you can join our program. So we have, again, our value prop, one-on-one -on -one sessions, blah, 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 included, 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 yes, all kinds of good stuff, news and resources, meet the team, the compliancyguys.com, really easy to remember. Okay, I'll stop it. sharing, boom. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to do the same. I think that was brilliant. Um, so this is my membership. Um, ignore the ugliness up here. It is mspsalesrevolution.com slash get hyphen it. And if you scroll, I mean, you, you can certainly read all of this and see if this sounds right to you. I'm actually in the process of redoing this, but there is some sample content at the bottom to make sure that it, it resonates with you. Um, and again, it's all around marketing sales and mindset. Um, if we can get those things right, that's what's going to fuel growth in your company. Yes, you'll need technicians. Yes, you'll probably need to change processes, things like that. But the fuel, the jet fuel is sales and marketing and mindset. And so everything I do is around those three core components. So awesome. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad we did this. A lot of, lot of fun. We'll see what kind of comments we get. I, I usually get about a 15, 20 people going back and watching the live. So yeah, let's make sure we we throw that out there one more time. If you did watch this yes. live, I saw a bunch of hashtag live. So make I sure that while you are watching this recorded, hashtag recorded. So yes. again, thanks so much for putting this, you know, pulling this off last minute. Um, I love doing this stuff. I hate seeing myself on camera though. I got <laughs> that screen <laughs> so i i had someone who actually covers themselves up with post-it notes <laughs> interesting. interesting i mean you know wh whatever it doesn't have to be high tech yeah. <laughs> low I mean, tech solutions work. i think you know me and i think most people know me well enough to know i love to talk and i love to you know bullshit and talk about whatever and hang out and and, and you know and get to some solutions at the end of the day yes. but this I, and I, I think I, I i think that's so important right because I don't want people to think, oh, all the all of the vendors in the world, at Nike, you know, whoever, Reebok, they all have this stuff figured out. They wrestle with this too. <laughs> this is not this is not an easy thing, but it's so important because it's going to drive your marketing messaging. You're going to in integrate it into your sales conversations, and so um, it, wrestle with it. So, re and obviously, reach out to Tim or I if we can help. Or I'm sure we're sounds like we're both always eager to get on the phone and help in any way we can. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much. It. Thanks Absolutely. So Have a great rest of your hang day. out while you end the Facebook Live. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if we can make that happen. Thanks everybody for joining us. Don't forget hashtag live if you're still happening to watch us as we wrap. Hashtag recording if you watch this after the fact. Thanks again. Thank you so much for your time. Take care.